Hey there, fight friends. Andy Cotterill here with Jasmine Jazdevicious in Thorold, Ontario, Canada, which is just near St. Catharines, which is the home base of Niagara Top Team where Jasmine fights. And if you're watching this video, you know who she is already. Jasmine is fighting in the UFC on June 10th, UFC 289 Vancouver. Jasmine, thanks for speaking with us. No problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Anytime. So it's about a week away, week and a half away before the event. Uh, this is arguably the biggest fight of your career. You mentioned that when you walked in the building. This is a huge fight for you. Uh, let's right off the bat. Let's just get going. Tell me about your thoughts about this fight. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. It's uh, obviously against the girl that's like my my greatest opponent to date. Um, but you know, I'm ready for this opportunity, and I'm I'm. I think I like I believe in my skills and abilities and I think that you know I can show that I can compete with the best in the world mm -hmm. and uh, you know to to be able to do it on home soil is just that much more rewarding. Mm -hmm. So UFC fighters these days it used to be years ago that somebody would dominate a lot of the time. These days so many fights are very competitive. You have got good fighters all across the board. So when you're taking a look at a fighter like Miranda Maverick What's the game plan? How does the team, you and your team, analyze her as an opponent and your skill set and the things you have to do to prepare for her? Um, you know, I don't want to give away any secrets, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it, when you're competing at the highest level, like everyone is going to be skilled everywhere. So no matter what, I'm, I'm training everything. I, you know, I'm always evolving myself. Um, that's you know there's I'm I'm tweaking what I'm doing for for her style but mainly this journey is just bettering myself and what what I am good at and focusing on on those things and I think like that's gonna be what shows in the fight I'm not reacting to her I'm making her react to me and that's smart because even after this fight is over you will be fighting again in the future so your skills have to be always improving regardless of who's next for you yeah, it, exactly. You gotta gotta be ever evolving, or you're you're done. <laughs> uh, the people who are watching this fight evolve, who watch social media, watch the fight, who follow people, fighters on Instagram and things like that. They saw this whole evolution of this fight happening li live when it was happening. She made a shout out on I don't remember if it was Twitter, or Instagram, one of the two, su suggesting that you would be a good fight, and you were all in right away. Tell us about your thought process when that happened, and and how you decided to attack it that way. <laughs> so after uh, my fight, she messaged me. She put something out on social media, and she DM'd me. She was super respectful about it. Um, she's like, "Yeah, good performance. Uh, like, l I'd love to. I'd love to share the octagon with you, or something like that." And I was like, "I just finished fight. You know what I mean? It was like the next day. I wake up to this. So then I'm like." man, I, I'm just exhausted. I'm, I'm going to take three days. I'm going to let my coach and my management and everything, I'm going to let them know. And, um, and I'll, I'll get back to you. Like, thanks for, thanks for the offer. And then, so I just messaged, screenshot it and messaged it to my coaches. And then I, uh, I said, don't talk to me for three days. Let me just chill. And then, uh, you know, I could hear them talking, everything. So I kind of knew what was going on. But um, but yeah, after three days, they said, "Let's go. Let's let's try to get this fight." And so we we figured, you know, how do, how how can we make this fight happen? Because if I just message her, "Hey, yeah, sure, let's do this fight," like who knows if it would actually happen? So I was like, "Okay, how do we make it? We can build this fight on social media." She reached out first. I'm like, "Okay, so then we're we're thinking of this whole thing." So then that's why we decided put it out on social media, then it'll be more likely that they'll actually make this yeah. matchup. Yeah. Like, we're both down to fight. It's easy for them. Like, let's just choose a time and a, and a date. And um, so, yeah, it kind of just, like, came together super easy. The matchmaker saw it, and, like, you know, we're just, both of, our, uh, both of us just told our management, hey, we're down for this fight. Let's try to do it. And then boom, boom, boom. Here we are. And the whole thing was just, I love watching it evolve, because first and foremost, I'm a fan too, so stuff like that gets me excited, because so many times these days, you see fighters are playing it safe, and they want to, I don't know if pad the record is the right word, but they want to handpick their opponents to somebody they know 100% they're going to beat. And I don't know, I know you're confident, and I know you're gonna, you think you're going to beat Miranda, but she's not a Ken, she's a, she's a tough fight, but you're a tough fighter, so this could be a great fight. So how is it that you take a look at her, or I take this back, so how is it that you've decided to have that attitude where you are not going to be like everyone else, where you're just kind of sitting back and waiting for a cherry can to be thrown at them? 
Uh, that I got a big old set of balls. No, no. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> That's my sound clip right there. <laughs> no, no. I. Um, yeah, obviously she's she's talented, everything, but like you know she's ranked 15 or 16, and I I called it from the start. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time, and I I want to just keep climbing the ranks like I want to eventually compete for that belt that's the that's the dream and uh, this is like a huge opportunity that that was presented to me and I'm all about striking when I can and uh, the, the iron was hot so 100% hot let's talk now about uh, UFC 29 being actually in Canada in Vancouver there was some evolution we thought maybe it was gonna be in Toronto or possibly Edmonton or who knows what other city but Vancouver is where it is uh, tell me, does this make any difference at all to you? I mean, I wish it was Toronto, but whatever. Like, the the fact that it's in Canada, it, it's amazing. Like, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm in that movie Braveheart. And I'm like, you know, coming in, like, defending the country kind of thing. So You should, you should do the blue face thing and whatever. Maybe red face for Canada. Hey, not a bad idea. Yeah. I'm really interested to know about... The, your thought process for gamesmanship and mental preparation for this fight, and I'll explain a little bit more. So we've all seen TV shows, movies, where other athletes in all sorts of sports, whether it's football or hockey or, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone in that over-the-top movie, Arm Wrestling, where he... We're going to pause for a second because our food's getting here. Come on, no, come on in, come on in. And we are eating at Fo 18, sorry, Fa 18, which is uh, a longtime sponsor of Jasmine. Uh, wonderful food. Niagara Top Team comes here all the time and treat like royalty. Uh, the food is just wonderful, as you can see here. Jasmine, it's got to be great to have that kind of long-term support. Ooh, yummy. What, what, did you order? what did you order? This is my specialty that I always order. Normally, it looks like this one here. It comes with noodle, but... Sometimes I want rice instead of noodle, and then that way, you know, sometimes I have to watch my carbs and everything, then I can just have, have everything else, but it's like um, turmeric kind of flavor, and I always get an egg on top. It's called Singapore noodle, it's the main dish, but I call it jazz special, and anyone that gets it, they say, they say the one that jazz gets, so they, Andy knows, uh, and it's always amazing. It is. The food here is so good. If you're ever in St. Catharines or Thorold, make sure you come to Fall 18. It's wonderful. Anyway, so we're going to go back to my question. So we've seen that movie over the top. Sylvester Stallone, if you've seen it, he gets, it was, if I remember correctly, in the zone. Like he, he gets up to the arm wrestling table and he's not ready to arm wrestle. And then he does this. He like whips his hat around and he's ready to fight. Yeah. So I'm wondering, are you the type of person who, I'm going to air quote here, normal, your normal person up until fight night, or is it a process where days and weeks leading up to it, when are you mentally ready? When are you mentally ready and accepting that you're going to war? Um, I think it's like kind of a process. Like I can always feel the closer to the fight gets, I'm I get more of like a chip on my shoulder, and I get I get a lot more like you know ready like ready to snap, and so I try to manage and like with relationships and everything I know Chris is very patient with me um, because I I know sometimes I just like snap a little bit but it's like just me getting the edge because it, exactly it's like I'm getting in there against this girl that's number 15 in the world in my weight class she's training to hurt me I'm training to hurt her like really hurt her you know what I mean and so it's like there's a process that you have to go through that you that you do have to like mentally accept that one you could get super hurt in front of, in front of my poor mom that's watching or that I have to actually break someone's arm I actually have to try to kill a person in their cho like in the choke you know what I mean so it, there's a process because that's not a natural thing you don't want to you don't want to like hurt someone like that to to the point you're killing them but i feel like going into the cage you have to and so there is like a, a mental process and that's why i think it's important after a fight to chill a little bit because you have to almost like flush that out after you don't want to hold on to that you know the whole thing sounds very exhausting just thinking about yeah. it yeah it's it's exhausting the, the whole camp leading up you're 
eight we I mean I never stop but still it's like your your eight weeks of dialed in focus nothing else in your life matters other than getting better and getting prepared more and more for that date that's coming up so and then you know there's the weight cut and all like managing life outside of it doing the medicals for the for the fight and you know always interviews <laughs> yeah yeah crazy crazy things happen and but you roll with it was this fight camp any different than other fight camps? I know Chris, your coach, has brought in other fighters. I know uh, Tanya Najjar, uh, Sierra Lee Dinwiddie, other fighters, great fighters. Felicity, you train with all the time. Tell me about some of the training partners you train with, and and, and I guess if there was anything different this camp. Uh, train with also Janine um, from uh, okay. Oshawa. Yeah, she. Uh, I trained with her a lot. That was awesome, and. Um, uh, Avery Sage and um, Kate, came down for a week. Kate, yeah, Kate Clement, and um, what's her name? Has a boyfriend. Alana Cook. Al Alana, no, and also Randy Field was down, yeah. And uh, yeah, so all, all a ton of girls, and, but then also I had a bunch of guys, like littler guys mm -hmm. that were helping me, Gino, I, I forgot his last. Yeah, he was a huge help really? this okay. camp, and Reeve, Reeve helped me a lot. T. Shea, yeah. Cody. I've been very, very fortunate. I feel like a lot of people have like Ligre as well have really like band together to help me get prepared for this. I, I'm, I'm like beyond grateful for everyone like helping me out so much. It's it's been awesome. For the casual fan watching a fight, they might see you step into the octagon, the door closes, there's three people in there. There's you, your opponent, and the referee. And they might think that it's an individual or a solo sport, but really, you're not going to get here by yourself. You've got a whole community and family growing up around you, don't you? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate because, like, Niagara Top Team, it's, it's a community. It's like a family. Everyone is helping each other out. Like, when one person's fighting, everyone's everyone's there for uh everyone's there to to help them get together and and you know the training partners aren't like not showing up for practice everyone is it's it's awesome we have a we have a great community and um and we're very we're very very fortunate great. yeah well you're getting ready to eat so we're going to wrap this up is there anybody before we go that you'd like to thank any special shout outs or any sponsors or anything Ah, uh, just showed out the the gym, the team, Niagara Top Team, best gym in the world. Training, always thank my training partners, and thanks for having me. Awesome, Jasmine. Well, we're really excited. I'm sure you're gonna have all Canada behind you next uh, next Saturday, two Saturdays from now. Congratulations on everything. Regardless, good luck, and we wish you the best. Thank you very much. There you go, fight fans. Jasmine Jazdevicious fighting June 10th, UFC 289, Vancouver. Wish her luck.